mm-hmm. uh, seeing people do art therapy events publicly. Right. Are there things that you usually look for to let you know, okay, this is an art therapy group session that's being done right. correctly versus uh, you're just looking to get a dollar? Right. Yeah. So uh, I came across this this week, actually. It was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, they were doing like a paint jean type of thing, mm-hmm. um, and they put it in the advertisement, like art therapy workshop. Mm-hmm. Um but they didn't have anybody also certified with art therapy in the space um, mm-hmm. or a science. And I was like, okay. So um, it just seems like, you know, you when it's <laughs> art therapy for sure, it's when it's like actually supervised. Take Sorry. your time. Sorry. I was going like to say, thinking. take your time. Take your time. Like, hey, you don't have to apologize. Um, You're fine. We're in the yeah. moment right now. So. <laughs> Cause mm-hmm. when it's like workshops that feel like, art is involved Mm -hmm. it's not necessarily always art therapy because you're not challenging you're not how to say that word channeling Mm -hmm. um all of the history that comes with therapy how many languages do you know oh spanish and english okay the reason i ask is (laughs) one of my friends who i just interviewed recently she's actually the most recent uh interview i did angue she knows four different languages (gasps) and she told me that like when you know so many languages Mm -hmm. no matter what you have to translate when someone asks you a question you have to translate through all the languages first (laughs) before you answer them so you know what language you're answering them back in correctly she's right yeah that's what happened so and like i could see it and i was like oh wow this is even if you only know like no a limited amount you still have to do that i still do it yeah but yeah let me let me do it again (laughs) 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 okay so what I was trying to say mm-hmm. is that um, chan- yeah, that part of channeling the emotions and the history mm-hmm. that comes with therapy, you don't get that in a group setting like a sip of pain because sip and paint because you're paying for an experience to make art, mm-hmm. but you're not connecting that to any treatment or any type of um, progress mm-hmm. emotionally. Yeah, you're just having an experience with paint and canvases and. It's definitely a good approach to get people to start painting. That mm-hmm. is definitely something that's, I feel like it's positive. And then they get together. It's a social um, interaction, mm-hmm. but there's no therapy component. Component. Yeah. So, yeah, it can't be cataloged like that. Would it be possible to create an art therapy event if you have a therapist on deck? Yes. Yes, we've mm-hmm. done that. Um, we do have, for example, in, my, in the internship I am right now. Do you mind if I switch the colors? Oh, what? Do you mind if I switch the colors? Yes, switch colors. Okay. Should we do... What should this color represent? Let's do anger. Anger? Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's going to be... That's going to take a while <laughs> to figure out which one that Let's is. Let's go anger. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was going to try to say. <laughs> Yeah, take your time. Sometimes, <laughs> also the, the part of like selecting colors by emotions, mm-hmm. people usually try to get the emotion that everybody thinks is connected to that. Um, but usually, um, everybody has their own expression of that feeling. So That's funny. For me, purple mm-hmm. could be anger, but then for you is I sadness. was going to pick purple. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening I was, I was gonna pick purple and then I said wait, wait. <laughs> let's really think about this <laughs> yeah I think uh, and it might be different for folks I think the yeah. color you're avoiding mm. is usually the color that anger is associated with mm-hmm. and most people well yeah. let me not assume most some people would like their day to be a good day so when you're trying to start your day out, you usually pick a color that you really enjoy. This is a cool color. Yeah. This keeps me grounded and everything else. But the color that's usually least in your closet is probably the color that's associated <laughs> with that emotion. And what's funny is when I thought yeah. of this color, I thought of how much as a kid in middle school and in high school, I wore this color all the time. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's going to be that, the color. That, that's it. That's, <laughs> that's, color. that's the color. <laughs> Yeah. Good old light blue. Light blue. <laughs> Which is interesting because, for example, for me, light blue is like super calming. Mm-hmm. But then you can now you can see. That's what the professionals exactly. say. Exactly. But yeah. then, like, 
all the experiences that we have are different. Because mm-hmm. let's say I had a bully that always wore an orange shirt. Mm-hmm. I'm going to relate to that color. Yeah. And that emotion or, or what I was feeling in that moment. When you do intake, do you ever have a bunch of color palettes in front of um, the people that you do work with and say, hey, mm-hmm. how does this make you feel? So it's or does uh, anything, do you get a certain feeling from this? 